Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about UV mapping, what is it and why do you need it in your life. If you've been following my Absolute Beginners course and started creating some of your first materials, you're probably wondering how you can apply a 2D texture like this. Let me just make it right. 2D texture like this on a 3D object like, let's say, this cube here. So you may think there is a way in Blender allowing us to somehow wrap this uh, texture somewhat like this around the object, when in reality it works a little bit more like with candies I have here. When you look at the candy, you can see the foil uh, kind of forms this 3D shape around it. And when I start unpacking it, or you can say unwrap it, you can see we now have this flat surface of something that was just a 3D kind of geometry a second ago. So that's basically what you have to do with shapes like the cubes I have here or even with more advanced shapes. Wow, that was intentional. With more advanced shapes, like this letter I have here. Without a further ado, let's now jump into it. Before we jump into Blender, we have to quickly revisit your school, especially the math or geometry classes. So you might remember creating those paper cubes as the one you can see on the screen right now. And a way of making them was creating the paper layout, gluing it so from the 2D shape, which I'm unfolding right now, you had this amazing 3D shape, a cube. This is basically what we have to do in Blender. So let me show you how. I'm going to start with default Blender file and you can see we have the UV editing tab here. If I click it, the cube is already in the edit mode and we can see something happening here. What we have on the left is a UV editor and what you have here, it looks similar to the paper cut I just showed you. It's already an UV mapped object. Let's go back to the default layout and configure it so we can have the UV editor here. I'm gonna press this icon, select UV editor. This is the way I work, so you don't you can use this panel here if you want to, but yeah. Um, let's remove the UV map that already exists within the object. We click this icon here, go to the UV maps, and then click minus. You can see it now disappeared. And what how do we explain Blender that we want to cut out this? cube into this paper layout. We do this by creating the seams and to create the seams we have to enter the edge mode here or we can use one, two, three, two for the edge selection mode. Now I'm going to press ctrl E and you can see we have the mark seam uh, property or option here. So let me select these three edges, press ctrl E and select mark seam. I will switch to this semi-transparent view so we have a better uh, look on what's happening. So this is an area that Blender will cut through when unwrapping this object. If I select everything by pressing A, press U key, which stands for UV, uh, you can see we have multiple options here. Let's just focus on the unwrapping. So when I click it, you will see there's something strange happening and that's usually because Blender doesn't know how to proceed with the rest of the object when unwrapping it. So that's why we have something strange happening. Um, let's keep on adding new seams. If I select these two edges and select the mark seam, select everything and press U again, you will see the layout will change again. And this area here looks kind of stretched. This one looks pretty all right. So we need to continue working on the cube and adding new seams and showing Blender how to cut through the object. This, this requires a little bit of imagination, but as I'm showing you right now, we can also do this on a trial and error kind of way. So you just select new seams, um, unwrap the object and see the result. Boom. Right now with 
all those edges added, you can see we have the result we were kind of looking for. I'm sure you also noticed we are free to add the seams any way we want. So the cross layout, UV layout we have created just a second ago is not the only output you can have. Let's say I select these four edges here. We can see the entire face is selected. When I press Ctrl E, click Mark Seam, this upper face will be cut out from the UV layout. So let's select everything, press U and unwrap. You can see the face when I press Ctrl Spacebar, we can go full screen here. You can see this face is now very nicely unwrapped here on the right and the rest of the geometry is distorted. So we have to work on it. Let's select those four edges, mark them as seam and unwrap everything again. So when I go to the full screen, you can see now we have everything unwrapped pretty nicely, but it would be cool to have everything kind of with the same rotation. When I press the L key here, I'm selecting the entire separate, like the, the entirely linked part of the geometry. If you remember from the beginner's course, when I press R or G or S, you can see the three main operations we use in Blender also apply within the UV editor. So with my R key pressed, I'm gonna now hold the control key and you can see I'm able to align the look of this UV map. When I press G, I'm free to move it around. When I press L here and Alt G to deselect, we can move the entire layout the entire UV map within this square layout here. I'm gonna now actually work on the letter H from the beginning of this video. How about that? Let's enter the edit mode and think how we can unwrap it. So I'm gonna go to the edge selection, start with those edges we have here, including these edges. I'm going to press Ctrl E, mark seam. And now when I switch to the face selection mode and hover my mouse button, and now I press L key, you can remember the L key was selecting everything that was linked and it still works if I'm in the vertex on the edge or the edge selection mode. So with my vertex mode selected, and when I press L, you can see the entire object gets selected. But when I switch to the face selection mode and press L right now, you can see we only get the selection within our UV seam. So that's pretty useful if you want to unwrap more complex models, but you want to hide parts of the geometry. I'm going to press the H key right now. And you can see this way we can uh, help ourselves knowing what else has to be UV mapped or unwrapped. So I'm going to repeat the same selection on the other side of the model. Press Ctrl E, mark seam, 3 to switch to the face selection, L to select and H to hide. This is what we have left. I would suggest creating a seam like that. Now repeating the same steps here. And switching back to the face mode, when I press L key, you can see I'm able to hide those objects. And yeah, we have the plain H layout left. So let's press Alt H to unhide everything. Let's select everything by pressing A. And now let's pray, sorry, let's press U, choose unwrap and see what's happening within the layout here. So we can see the layout looks pretty good. Uh, there aren't any distortions, but we still don't know how the texture will look on our leather. So let's now create a very quick material and see how it all looks like. Let's enable the shading interface here and you can see we have most of the things prepared for us. I'm going to use one of the free Choco 4 textures you can download from our store. Link is in the video description. I'm just dragging and dropping it here and linking the color with the base color inputs. So by default, 
you can see the texture is distributed pretty nicely, nothing to add here. But what if you want to have those stripes going sideways? So you need to enter the edit mode and you have to make sure here we have a UV editor, not an image editor. When you click it, by default, everything here is selected. So we're, let's pray, uh, pray again. Let's press Alt A. Let's now deselect everything here. Switch to the face selection. Okay, we are using it and press the L key here and here. You can see we have those parts of our UV layout highlighted. When I press the A key, they are selected. And now I'm gonna press R, type 90 to rotate it by 90 degrees. And you can see the effect happening directly in the 3D viewport. So when I press the R key and just freely rotate those parts of our UV layout, the update in the viewport is instant. And there you have it, the absolutely essential knowledge on UV mapping in Blender, which should allow you creating your first very basic but nice looking texture based materials. So far, we've only scratched the surface of this topic, but I'm going to talk about it more in the upcoming videos. As for now, thank you guys for watching. Please remember to visit Chocofor's store and donate to Blender Foundation because thanks to people like you, this amazing piece of soft this amazing piece of software can become even better. That's it for now. Thanks again for watching. Bye bye.